page 132. Six lines from the top. Yeah, and then we get up to the lovely uh, uh, circumcising people who may have leprosy. Hmm. What was this? How did this chapter start? Revelia said Dimila. That's not how it started. It started with um, well, with the thing is just words. Rabbi Eliezer saying in the Mishnah about uh, the fact that circumcision overrode the restrictions of Shabbat and ah, not yeah. just in relation to um, the carrying of the knife but also in relation to the making of the knife if necessary. Right, that's right. Adkan, only until here, only until here do the rabbis argue with Rabbi Eliezer in this matter, meaning about uh, concerning the preliminaries of circumcision. Aval, Mila, Gufa, however, regarding circumcision itself, Divrei Hakol, Docha, Shabbat, the opinion of all is that it overrides Shabbat. Minalan, from where do we know this? Amar Ula Halacha. Ula said, it's a law from Har Sinai. As in an oral law. The Chen Amar Rabbi Kama. He's added to that. Yeah. But there is no biblical basis for it. So there's no written biblical basis. Rabbi Yitzchak. That's according to Ula. Right. Of the Chen Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Halacha. And Rabbi Yitzchak said exactly the same thing. Meitive, uh, they objected with a brisa. Minain lepikuach nefesh shedochet haShabbat. From where do we know that saving a life overrides Shabbat? Rabbi Elazar, that's not Eliezer, it's Elazar ben Azaria Omer. Ma mila shehi achat me'evarav shel adam. Just as uh, circumcision, which is one of a person's limbs, which relates only to one of a person's limbs, docha et hashabbat overrides Shabbat. Kal vachomer lepikuach nefesh. All the more so. Shedoche et hashabbat. Sorry, call. Sorry, kava chomer lepikach nefesh. All more so, saving a life, which enables an endangered person to continue fulfilling all the mitzvahs of Torah. Ah, shedoche et hashabbat should override Shabbat Shabbat restrictions. The isalka de tachalacha. So now, if it enters your mind that. It's a oral law. It should enter your mind to say that circumcision may be perform, performed on Shabbat. That circumcision, we're back to it now, according to Rabbi Steinsel's. Say that one more time. Now, if it enters your mind. If it should enter your mind, and he's added to say that circumcision may be performed on Shabbat based on halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai, Kalvachomer mehalacha mi ate. Can a kalvachomer come from such a law? So, assuming that it's an oral law, can you make a kalvachomer from a from an oral law? Is that yes. what it, it sounds yeah, that's like? What, what it's saying. That's what it's saying. Vehatanya, but it was taught in a baraisa. Amalo Rebbe Elazar ben Azaria Akiva. So Rabbi Lazar said to Rabbi Akiva, Akiva, etzem kiseora metame halacha. A barley-sized bone contaminates. This is an oral law. So it contaminates nazir. Yeah. Or vi'it dam kalvachomer. 
and from here we derive a quarter, a quarter of a log of a corpse's blood is is a Calva Homer argument, meaning that if he comes into contact with a quarter log of corpse's blood, he has to recommence his Nizirut. So so based on so based on the I just want to say that again. Uh, so based on the barley size bone, which is an oral law, from there we derive that a quarter log of blood also um, contaminates, and that's the Calva Homer argument from the barley bone to the quarter of blood. The Ein Danin Calva Homer Mahalacha. But we do not reason via a Calva Homer from an oral law. Question mark. There's a He's got a big expansion on this. Shall I read? Yes, please. Yes, please. And if it should enter your mind to say that circumcision may be performed on Shabbat based on a halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai, it is a kalva homo inference derived from a halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai? Wasn't it taught explicitly in a brasa that an kalva homo Inference cannot be derived from a halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai. Rabbi Akiva sought to derive that a Nazarite who comes into contact with a quarter log of blood from a corpse becomes ritually impure and is required to shave his hair. He sought to do this based on a uh, kalvahoma inference from the halacha of the bone from a dead person the size of a grain of barley as he had a received tradition that a Nazarite is required to shave his head to hair due to that contact. Now we get back to the black print. Rabbi Elazar ben Azar Ria said to him, Akiva, the halacha that a bone the size of a grain of barley transmits ritual impurity is a halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai. And you would derive from it that a quarter of a log of blood transmits ritual purity based on a calva homo inference. And one does not derive a calva homo inference from a halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai. The Tosefta explicitly states that Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah himself derived uh, a calva homo Inference from the halacha of circumcision on Shabbat. Clearly, then, it is derived from the Torah itself and not from a halacha transmitted to Moses from Sinai. Okay. So that's why Elazar's pull, so we have, has pulled him up. So we need, but we need to find, so we need to ask Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah. Well, he, he's got more to say. Ella, my Rabbi Elazar. Atya ot ot, the law of overriding for the Milan Shabbos. This is deri- derived from the Gezeri Shabbos. Ot ot, sign, sign. Do you have the full uh, look in there? Yes. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin and shall be a sign of the covenant mm-hmm. between me and you. Okay. And then it goes on, that's Genesis fifteen eleven. and sign that appears with regard to Shabbat. However, you shall keep my Shabbatot, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. Okay. Uh, I'm just, as, as you were reading that, I was thinking about the uh, Gezerah Shabbat rules and whether you actually need the word sign. Anyway, it goes on, from this verbal analogy, it is derived that a circumcision, which is a sign, may be performed even on Shabbat, which is itself a sign. But do you, I get that, do you, but do you get the, the remember the Gezeri Shava rules where you... There were ha- three possible. That's right, it has to be free, mm. or free on only one side, or, or un, 
both sides and are closed or are not free. So that sounds like it's free on both sides, as in you don't necessarily need the word sign there in order to make the point. I really don't know. Okay. Elam Atta, so according to that, Tfilin Dichtiv Bahen Ot, Tfilin, concerning with where it says the sign is also written, Lidchi Shabbat should also override Shabbat restrictions. So it's not a it's not a decent enough Gazera Shabbat. Well, he, he quotes it in full, and it should be for a sign on your hand and for phantoms between your eyes. Uh, Ella Atya Brit Brit. Rather, the overriding the law for overriding the, the Milan Shabbat is derived from the word Brit Brit. Gadol Dichtiv Be uh, Be Brit. The Miller of uh, adults concerning whom covenant is written, Lidchi Shabbat should all should also override Shabbat restrictions. And we know it doesn't. Ah, so, so, so where is that written? That's written in an uncircumcised male in Genesis seventeen fourteen. Yeah. An uncircumcised male shall be cut off from his people. He has invalidated my covenant. Actually, he he quotes Genesis seventeen. Uh, yeah, that's 11. it. Ah, oh, seventeen eleven. Um, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. And then the second quote he gives is from Exodus. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. All right. Uh, okay, so we can't use Brit Brit because... That's also used elsewhere. Ella Atya Dorot Dorot, rather the law of overriding is derived from generations to generations. Tzitzit Tzitzit Be Dorot. But the preliminaries of Tzitzit concerning which uh, Dorot generations is also written. Lidhi Shabbat, that should also override Shabbat. Ella Ma Rav Nachman Baritzak Danin Ot Brit Vedorot. Oh, that's a clever one. We learn that the words Ot, Brit, and Dorot, sign covenant and generations, me Ot, Brit, Vedorot, from Shabbat, is also associated, associated with the words sign covenant and generations. La Pukek Hanach, to exclude these other mitzvahs, meaning all three words mm. are in both Sukkim. Dechad, chad, hu, tichsiv, bahem. For only one of these is, uh, words is written by each of them. Which means they don't apply. So this is a, this is a triple, this is a trifecta mm. of Gezerah Shabbos. The Rabbi Yoch, is that being disrespectful? No. no. The Rabbi Yoch Amar. Amar Kra Biyom. He gives a different source. The verse st states on the day or on the eighth day, Biyom Afilo Shabbat. On the day, meaning even on Shabbat. To me, up until this point, this has always seemed the most overriding argument that it says you do it on the, on the eighth day. day. Which, you know, and if that falls on Shabbat, yeah. so be it. Well, I, I don't know why they're yeah. worrying about it. Um, yes, we, we've certainly had before uh, words to the effect of logic dictates. Mm. That if it says, or even the word shita, it's obvious. It yeah. says the eighth day, do the eighth day. Mm. Anyway, we've got a bit more of this. Yeah, I think one of the later arguments is it states the eighth in order to exclude the seventh and the ninth, etc., etc. 
the Rabbi Yochanan so he said the eighth day even on Shabbat Amalei Reish Lakish the Rabbi Yochanan Ela Ma'ata but according to that Mechusrei Kapara Dichtiv Behu Beyom regarding purification offerings those who lack atonement concerning which on the eighth day is also written Hachi Nami Shabbat, it should also be true that they have right Shabbat. Ah, so we've got a number of circumstances where eight days mentioned. Yeah, sacrificing their atonement often, often it should also override Shabbat. Hahu, so Rabbi Yochman um, rejects this. Hahu mi beyond the loba leila, that on the day about the atonement is needed to teach that they're brought brought the offerings are brought during the day and not at night. Rosh Lakish Lakish comes back and says, Hey Nami Mi Bailabiyongalobalela is so say this in regards to the Mila Brit Mila is also needed to say during the day and not at night. Uh, in which case the miller would not override Shabbat. Rabbi Yochanan answers, Hahu mi ben shmonat yamim nafka. That law is derived from another verse where it says, at the age of eight days. So, so see, the word days is extraneous and thus teaches that miller must be performed during the day. Ah, that's the extraneous word. Means that we use that. Uh, I just want to think of something. Nafka. Right. Resh Lakish again says, Hai nami me mi biyom tsavoto tsavoto nafka. This law that they brought during the day also is derived from another verse. The atonement offering we know back to. Ah, the atonement offering is also derived from a different verse, i.e., on the day God commanded the children of Israel to bring their offerings. And so the word day there. So. From here it is derived that all offerings are sacrificed by day and not at night. I thought that was just teaching us now that we do it, that it overrides the Shabbos restriction. I think no. we've, we've got caught up in this whole... Okay. We, we're off on, on a sidetrack about you know, where do you know that all this is done. Afal gav de nafka mi beyond sabato, even though the law that sacrifices uh, are brought by day is derived from on the day God commanded beyond sabato, it's dricha, it's necessary to repeat it for the atonement offering. Salka de tachamina, because if it would enter your mind, to, into your mind, that I might say, Ho'il v'chas rachmana alei la'atoye b'dalot, since the merciful one had compassion on this tame, on the impure person, uh, allowing him to bring uh, a lesser sacrifice in his poverty, malayla nami leite, let him bring it at night as well, meaning if you're going to start with leniencies, hmm. let him bring it at night as well. Kamash malan, therefore, on the day informs us that the tame the tame sacrifice has to be brought during the day. Matkikla Ravina, Ravina challenges Elam Ata, but according to that, Yehezar Kasher Bahen. Let a stranger, non Kohen, be qualified for uh, be qualified for their bringing. Be Vihe Onen Kasher Bahen. And let an onen be qualified for their bringing. That sounds like we're going out on a, on a real limb here. It sounds to me like. Ha 
Ahadre Kra. The Gemara answers the verse on the day explicitly returned the purification offering. What is that last part, Peter? Okay. Ha Ahadre. The Gemara yeah. answers the verse has restored this. And then he's expanded the additional verse that teaches that even one lacking atonement may sacrifice during the day also teaches that the Torah was lenient with regard to this offering only in the ways explicitly stated in the Torah. Because one of the suggestions of this business of um, doing it at night, for instance, as a leniency, is that the person wouldn't have to wait so long to be purified. If you could bring the sacrifice at night for purification, for atonement and purification. Yeah. You wouldn't have to wait for the next day. So that would be a leniency. Yeah, that's so right. So you were, I think you went to the mikvah on the seventh day and then the next day you brought the offering, mm. which is the eighth day. And if you could have gone to the mikvah and then sort of at the start of the eighth day, which is at night, carried out the sacrifice, you would have been freed earlier. So that's why it's necessary to show that there's a limit but the only leniencies are those specifically provided for by the Torah. And that does not include nighttime atonement sacrifice, which has to be at daytime. Right. Could you just say nighttime sacrifice, which has to be in the daytime? Well, you couldn't do it at night, right. because it had to be at <coughs> Ravacha bar Yaakov Amar, Amar Krashmini. So the Miller overriding Shabbat comes from the verse where it says, On the eighth day! <laughs> Shmini Afilu bar Shabbat. That's exactly what we said. We like Ravacha bar Yaakov, don't we? And everybody ha- else who said that. Hai <laughs> Shmini mi baile le ma'utse shvi'i. We have to figure out who's answering him back here. This eighth is needed to exclude the seventh. There you go, Peter. Mm. Yeah, I only knew that because I sort of read this and thought, rubbish. Shvi mi ben shmonat yomim nafka. Seventh is derived from at the age of eight days. So the fact that we don't do it on the seventh is derived from where it says at the age of eight days. Let me read the expansion here. The Gemara raises a difficulty. This usage of the term eighth is necessary to exclude the seventh day. That is, a child may not be circumcised before the eighth day. The Gemara answers the fact that one may not circumcise on the seventh day is derived from a different verse, as it is stated, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you throughout your generation. I don't know what they're talking <coughs> about. I really don't. Baruch Hashem, you and I have a strong Masorah. But Akesi mi baile chad le ma'ute still one of the verses is needed to exclude the miller on the seventh day. But chad le ma'ute and one is needed to exclude on the ninth day. Zim mechad, for if we'd use just one of the verses, I would think it is uh, on the seventh day that we're not allowed to do. Delo matazimne, since the mist of time has not arrived. Avon mishmin ve'ela zimne hu. But from the eighth day onward, is it is it the time? Is it the primary time? Ah, uh, finally the penny's dropped. I know why they're arguing. Hmm. Because there are two verses. There are two verses. So why do we have it twice? Why, why is it there twice? You know, the idea that there's not a superfluous word. Yeah. So there must be a reason why it's said twice. Therefore, we've got to ferret out those reasons. Two verses. One verse shows you it's not on the seventh. And the other verse shows you it's not on the ninth. And then you can feel comfortable with the thought that there's never a spare word. That makes sense. I think that's what's going on here. Ela mechavurta, sorry, le mechavarta kid Rabbi Yochan. Rather, it's 
clear according to Rabbi Yochanan's explanation. Oh, so basically the Gemara just chucked out mm. all of that yeah. nice logical explanation. Tanya Kavatei to Rabbi Yochanan, who's certainly writing in the with Rabbi Yochanan, Udlok Rabbi Acha Bar Yaakov, and not in accordance with Rabbi Acha Bar Yaakov, our friend. Shmini Yimol, on the eighth day you shall be circumcised, which is a quote from Leviticus Lekha 12.3. Afilu Be Shabbat, it, it means even on the Shabbat. Uma Ani Mekayim Mechalaleha Mot Yumat, and how do I establish that where it says, didn't we just read about that? Mot Yumat? In Shemot thirty one fourteen, yeah, I think that was just in last week's Pasha. Uh, how do I establish where it says the Shabbat desecrators shall be put to death? With regard, uh, so how do I establish it? With regard to the other labors besides circumcision, or eno ella or it is not so. But even circumcision is prohibited. Uma ani mekayim shmini imol. And so, how do I establish what the eighth day shall we circumcise means? Chutz mi Shabbat. It means that you can do it except for Shabbos. Talmud lomar bayom, which Talmud lomar, the verse states on the day. The Torah states on the day. Afilu be Shabbat. Meaning on that very day when he turns eight days old, even on Shabbat. Sorry, uh, the flow of that didn't go very well for me. How do I establish uh, the eight days shall be circumcised? Circumcised. Chutz mi Shabbat. It means except for Shabbat. He's telling an argument. Talmud Omar Beyom. If you have a law that says that you can't do it on Shabbos, um, carry out these labors on Shabbat, and then it tells you the eighth and day, it tells you the eighth day, then the other possible meaning is do it on the eighth day except for that except day. Except for Shabbat. But then he says, then it says Talmud Omar Beyom. And then the answer to that is the verse states on the day. Which, from which you derive on the oh, day when the child oh, has eight days old. Okay. Right. Got it. Okay. So, ah, okay. So, Talmud Loma kind of means, therefore, in order to get rid of that possible interpretation mm. of yeah. except on Shabbos, it actually says Bayom. Yeah. Meaning, a filo Shabbat, meaning even on Shabbat. Mm. Now we're going to analyze the Baraita. Amar Rabba. Hai tana me'ikara mai ka nikhale. Why to this tana was it originally appropriate? Why was it originally appropriate to say on the eighth day literally and it's desecrated loosely? And in the end, what was difficult to him? Okay, let's read. Chacha Kama, the Tana was saying like this. Shmini Yimol, the eighth day shall be circumcised. Afilu Shabbat, even on Shabbat. Uma Ani Mekayem Mechalalei Hamot Yumat. So how do I establish that the desecrated shall be put to death? Bishar Malachot Chutz Mimila, with regards to anything else, any other labor except circumcision. Aval miladachia. However, circumcision overrides. Maitama, what's the reason? Kalvachomer, who is Kalvachomer? Umat tzaraz, in as much as tzaraz prohibition is strict. Shedocha et havoda, it overrides the sacrificial service obligation, meaning konim are forbidden to cut off tzaraz spot on their bodies, even if it means there will be no eligible konim to perform the sacrifice service and non-kind is forbidden to cut off Sarah's but to qualify himself to bring Pesach offering. Okay.
Okay. Uh, so just like a terras prohibition is strict because it overrides servers, the avodah, the avodah dochay to Shabbat, and the service, sacrificial service, overrides Shabbat. Overrides Shabbat. Does it? Yes. It's added as Shabbat offerings are sacrificed at their appointed <coughs> time. And nevertheless, ah, circumcision Mila. overrides leprosy. Mila Ducha Ota. Circumcision overrides Sarat. He adds, if Shabbat. there were symptoms of leprosy on the foreskin of the baby, one circumcises the child even though he thereby violates the prohibition to cut off symptoms of leprosy. Ah, oh, if there's leprosy on the foreskin. Yeah. Ah. Shabbat. So in regard to Shabbat, which is overridden on account of the service, isn't it logical that circumcision should override it? That makes perfect sense. Wow. And what is... Uh, the town of stating when he said, or... Well, just what we've just dealt with, according to Steinsalz. Yeah. This was <coughs> the Tano's reasoning... Sorry, say again. This, what we've just said, this was the Tano's reasoning at the outset. The tano, uh, call the Tano's changing his mind. And we're now going to find out why he changed his mind. Okay. Aha. Well, may I know the come out, and what is the Tano's stating, or... It is not so. The Baraisa must have had, or it's not so. I assume. Well, he's just got all perhaps. <coughs> or perhaps. Or perhaps. There's another way of looking. But it must have been in the. Must have been on the in the Baraisa. Oh yeah, or Eno. Okay. Um, Hadar Amar so the Tana subsequently said Umimayt Tzara'at Chamura from what do we know that Tzara'at is more stringent than Shabbos Dilma Shabbat Chamura perhaps Shabbos is more stringent Sheken Yesh Ba'onashin Ba'az Harot Harbe for indeed it it carries many penalties and prohibitions. Umimai mishum to chamirat sarati. And from what uh, do we know that because sarat is more stringent than the sacrificial service? Dilma mishum gavra hu delo chazi. Because he is not ritually fit. And how do I establish on the eighth day the, fo- the foreskin shall be circumcised? Shabbat. It, it perforce means that Milah shall be formed on every eighth day except Shabbat. Talmud Lomar, Bayom. So we can preclude that, that interpretation. The Torah states on the day. Implying, I feel about Shabbat, even on Shabbat. Can we keep going? Yes, yes. San Rabbanan, the rabbis taught. Not that I want to get, don't want to get bogged down, but I'd love to get bogged down. <laughs> no, it's just, uh, I get back to what I said earlier. Yeah. We're back to square one. Square one. San Rabbanan, the rabbis taught. You know, Bryce, I'm Mila Jocha et Hatarat. So, circumcision over Isaras. Ben bismana, ben shalob bismana, whether it's at its proper time or not at its proper time. Yom tov ena docha ela bismana bilvad. But circumcision overrides a festival only when you do it at its proper time. Ah, so let's say you have to delay, you have to delay Mila. 
then if it falls out on Shavuot, like it, then you don't you don't you don't make Mila. Mm. If it was after the eighth day, you can do it at any time. So, if, for instance, we're talking about say a comfort. So you wouldn't schedule you wouldn't, there. You wouldn't do him on Shabbat. Right. Right. right we're talking so about like <coughs> you know, he was born Jewish. Mm. He was Dutch, but he was born during the Second World War and the baby. They didn't snip him at the time, and he was in his mid to late thirties now. Confirmed homosexual and decided that you know, he was Jewish, he wanted to be circumcised. So he had a. What, at what age? He was in his mid to late 30s, I'd say. <coughs> anyway, he got himself circumcised mm. and he was in hospital because that age. And uh, for the first time in his life, he reacted to being handled by the female nurses. Ah. And uh, when they were doing the dressing, he got erection and uh, it pulled the stitches out. He had to be re-sewn and sort of uh, semi-anesthetized in his privates until such time as he'd sort of healed a bit better. Mm. Very interesting. He was he telling me about he it. Back. He was laughing his head head off. You know, the only time in my life that I've ever reacted to a female. Right. Perfect time. <laughs> That's amazing. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I was circumcised at 30 days because I had joined us. Yeah, so my parents awful. wouldn't have scheduled it for Shavuot, for example. Where are we? before we got on to homosexuals? No, before we got on to mature age um, circumcision. circumcision. <laughs> I really don't know where I left off. Um, that was little. I think we were just ah. about to do it or a no ela. Aha. So, Minahane right. Mile? No, we can start there. Go Where on. did you say? Uh, it was the next section, but go on, let's start there. Where are these? Only at its. So, uh, just to go back, so it said circumcision overrides the festival only if it's at its proper time, yep. which would be the eighth day. Yeah. Minahane Mile? From where do we derive this law that Miller overrides Saras when right did uh the tunnel rabbanan as the rabbis taught you more basar are or lator the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised the afal pishish sham beheret yakot and even though a beheret spot top of Saras is there. He shall cut it off. Uma ani mekain hishamer me benega hatsarat. And how do I establish, take heed concerning the affliction of tsaras? Bishar mekomat chutzmi mila. This is in all other places besides circumcision. Or eno ela afilu mila. Or it's not so, and it's even. For circumcision, where it, you include it. Omani Makami Mobasara Lato, and how do I establish the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised then? Because obviously you can't have, have one has to override the other. Bisman Sha'in Babaheret, that's only at a time when there is no Baheret on the foreskin. Talmud Lomar, uh, in order to get rid of that interpretation, therefore we say the Torah states, the flesh. The Afal P so that flesh must be from must be from a Pasuk Basar. 
Well, again, he says, the verse states the superfluous word flesh yeah, I'm it would just have been sufficient to state his foreskin shall be ah, circumcised. Basar or lato. But instead the verse stated the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Right. And even though there is baharis but there. Right. So that's why the word basar is there. Mm. It could have just said or lato. It says basar or lato. Mm. In the fact that there's the word basar there, it says flesh. Indicating Which that the flesh is to be removed. Ama Rava. Regardless of what might be on it. Is it that or is it. Because removing, the big problem is removing the sign of leprosy. Teaches even though a bahar a the word basar flesh is extraneous, since the Torah could have stated simply and on the eighth day's foreskin shall be circumcised. Flesh is therefore available to teach that Miller overrides the Torah's prohibition. Okay. Amar Rava, not many halachot on this, are there? Not really. Circumcision overrides leprosy, there's a halacha, mm-hmm. and overrides a festival only when performed at its appointed time. Okay. But we've covered that. Yeah. Amarava, hai tana makira mai nikhale. Why to this tana was it originally appropriate to, what was it, what's all of a soft mai kashale, and in the end was difficult to him about his reasoning. Is that, can you read that particular? The, that, that little bit there, or is that what it says? Rava said initially, what did this Tana find acceptable, and ultimately, what did he find difficult? At first he assumed that the mitzvah of circumcision is more stringent, but he ultimately rejected this assumption with no explanation. Okay. Kamar, the Tana was saying, Yimor basar told the flesh of his foreskin should be circumcised, teaching, uh, which teaches that the foreskin is cut off in all cases. But Afal Pishesh Baharis, that is, in, even though there is Baharis, but on it. Umani Makayim, Tishamir Benega Hatarat. And how do I establish take heed concerning the affliction of Tarat? Vishamir Komos Chutzmimila, that's in all other places besides circumcision. Aval Mila Dachayat Tatarat, circumcision overrides Tarat. My Tama, what's the reason? To Atim Mikavachomu, because it's derived from Mikavachomu, Mashabat Chamura. Since Shabbat is more stringent than Tzaras, Mila Docha Ota, circumcision, and even though, and nevertheless, circumcision overrides it, Tzaras Lok Kol Shiken, shouldn't circumcision not certainly override Tzaras? Ah, that's, oh, I, I see the point. Or may or a not come out, and what is the Tana stating, or it is not so? Uh, Hadar Kamar, the Tana subsequently said, Mimai de Shabbat Chamira, from what do we know that Shabbat is more stringent? Dilma Tarat Chamira, perhaps Tarat is more stringent, Shikhen Dochayat Avoda, for indeed it overrides the service, Avoda Dochayat Shabbat, and the service overrides Shabbat. But then the Kalkhom would be undermined. Tamud Lomar Basar, so in order to Get rid of that idea, the Torah says the flesh, an extraneous word, for Afal Pishyesh Sham Baheret. And even though there is a Baheret spot there, you can cut it off and perform the circumcision. This page is definitely filler. Wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and see here, I thought we were going to get onto a nice little story. No, no. Lishna Krina, another version. Mila Dochat Saras, circumcision overrides Saras. My Tama, what's the reason? Dache Ase, Vedache Lotase, because the positive commandment of Mila comes and overrides the negative commandment of cutting off Saras. Oma, Omai, or Eno de Kamai, and what is the Tana stating, or it's not so, uh, which would imply retraction? Hadar Kama, the Tana subsequently said to himself, one could say that we 
say that a positive commandment comes and overrides a negative commandment. Lots I say greda uh, when this is only with a negative with a negative commandment. But this is a positive this is a case of a positive commandment and a negative commandment. Or and how do I establish the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised? Bismansha in bar baheret. This applies at a time when there is no baheret on the foreskin. Tamod lamar basar. The Torah states the flesh for afal pisha yesham baheret. And even though there is baheret, well, you can do it. Tenach gadol. It's appropriate in respect of the case of an adult, uncircumcised adult. Dichtiv behu basar. For the flesh basar is written. Superfluously with regard to them. Katan namiktiv bebesa, with regard to an infant as well, the word flesh is written, benoni menalan, from where do we derive a. Like a belt. From where do we derive a middle category? As in, somewhere in between. Eight okay. days old and, and a adult. child who was not circumcised on the eighth day but has not yet reached majority. Right. So a, a minor but not an infant. Mm. Amma, correct? That under was, well, yeah, under thirteen. Between Amar Abaye, Atyami Mi Benaya, it's derived from two other categories. Mi Gadolo Atya, the middle category cannot be derived. Middle category. Do you have there the words middle category or the middle or um, intermediate is what he is. yeah. So the intermediate cannot be derived from the legal adult case. Shaken anush karet for indeed an adult, an adult is punished with excision. Ah, as in they don't they don't become part of the Jewish people. Mikatan lo atya, and the intermediate cannot be derived from the infant. Shaken mila bismana, for indeed that circumcision at its proper time. Hatsad hashave shabahin, the feature common to both them, the adult and the adel. Shaken nimolin vedochin et hatsarat, is that they are indeed uh, subject to circumcision, and their circumcision overrides sarat. Af kosh nimolin dochin. Et so to here, so to where all who are circumcised, their circumcision, circumcision is over at Saras. Rav Amar, Mila Bismana Docha Lotsricha Kra. Circumcision at its time overrides Saras, does not require um, an extra verse. Mikavachomer Atya. Because the Lord is derived from Mikavachomer. As follows, Uma Shabbat de Chamira, since Shabbat is more stringent than Saras, Docha uh, circumcision overrides it. Saras lo kol shaken. Shouldn't Mila override Saras? Which is a logical conclusion. Amale Rav Safra le Rava. From what do we know that Shabbat is more stringent? Dilma Saras Chamira. Perhaps Saras is more stringent. Sheken Docha et Havadah because it overrides the service. Vavadah Docha et Shabbat and the service overrides Shabbat. Hatam there, your point that you just made. Um, love Mishum de Chamira Tarat is not because Tarat is more stringent than service. Ela Mishum de Gavra Hu de Lochazi, but because the Kohen is not fit, is not ritually fit. Aha. Amai, why should the Kohen be disqualified? We are caught. Let him cut off his Baharet 
uh, and perform the service. Mechos mechusar tvilahu. The kohen is lacking immersion, meaning even if he cut it off, cut off the baharin, he still has to immerse, which he can't do until the end of the day. So it's impossible. Tainach mm. negaim tmeim. It's a pr- uh, your answer is appropriate for impure afflictions like the Baharit. This is appropriate for impure afflictions such as Baharit. Negaim tahurim. But with pure afflictions where there's no immersion, Maika lamema. What is there to say? What's a pure affliction? Well, he, Rav Safaraz, it works out well if we are referring to impure symptoms of leprosy, as even one who removes them must immerse himself afterwards. Yes, but what is pure now, what However, is with regard to pure symptoms of mm. leprosy, there is a prohibition to cut off the symptoms even though there is no impurity. They have the, le- have the legal status of blemishes that invalidate ah. a priest from serving... Ah until it is cured. Ah! Brilliant. A faint white spot called a bohak. It's called. Mai kalamema, what is there to say there? Elama ravashi Pecha amrinan de ate ase vedache lot ase Where do we say that a positive commandment comes and overrides a negative commandment? Kegon mila betzaras. For example, with circumcision, for circumcision with Tzaraz present, inami titit vechilaim, and alternatively titit and kilaim, deveidna timitaker lav ka mokim aser, where at the moment the negative commandment is violated, one fulfills the positive commandment. Hacha beidna timitaker la lav. Here at the moment the negative commandment uh, of for example, cutting off shreds is violated. Lo ka mokim aser. The kind is not fulfilling the positive commandment of performing the of performing the sacrificial service. Therefore, the service cannot override taras. The hard to rava the rav safra, and this dispute of rava and rav safra. Tanaya here is actually controversy between Tanaim, Titania as was taught in Abraisa, Basar, the flesh, which is in that Pasuk, um, Va'afal Pishyesh Sham Baharit Yimol, and even though a Baharit spot is there, he shall perform the circumcision. Divrei Rabbi Yoshia, this is what Rabbi Yoshia said, Rabbi Yonatan Omer, Enotarech. A verse is not needed because you can derive from a Kalva Chomer, Shabbat Chamora, Shabbos is stringent, Docha, uh, and circumcision overrides us, Saraas, Lo Kolshken, should not, uh, therefore shouldn't, Milah certainly override Saraas. we stop there? Yes, okay. For the most part, I actually, to a certain extent, got it. Mm. What do you reckon? Yeah, it did hurt. That's why we had to go at such length. Yeah, I don't think we need to jump through all those hoops. Mm. Although, I suppose it's worthy of an argument because it's just so incredibly important. Mm. You know, the only thing that overrides Shabbat, well, maybe not the only thing, but one of the main things that's not in relation to, uh, what's it called, um, <coughs> when you have to save a soul, what's it called? Um, nef- Pekoach nef- nef- nefesh. It's really of an argument. But anyway, could I meet you at 2 o'clock?